together collectively here we worship and how we worship is declaring the goodness of God over every single situation in our lives. So would you do something with me from the front to the back, the left to the right? Would you lift your hands towards heaven as a sign of surrender, saying, sign God, I need you as we sing this together.
any different things that might hinder us or stop us like so many places have today. Thank you for all the families that have come. Thank you for the, all the young people that are here with us today. Thank you for the graduates that we're uh, thinking about today. And the graduates in so many different places uh, that we have been dealing with all week long. Thank you, Lord, for loving us like you do. Pray, Lord, you'll bless now and uh, bless this worship service that we might uh, look to you for something special that you have uh, to offer us through the pastor's message. Be with us, Lord, as we continue to worship you in truth and in holiness. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. And now the graduates will come. Today we're going to recognize, you may be seated, we're going to recognize our seniors. Our first senior we're going to recognize is Riley Hazen McCorkle. He is the son of Whitney and Sean McCorkle. His plans after high school is to attend Southern Union on a baseball scholarship. He has yet to decide on his major. He will be graduating from Dothan High School on May 17, 2024. Our second senior is Sarah Renee McGonigal. She is the daughter of Shannon and David McGonigal. Her plans after high school is to attend the University of Mobile, and she will major in Christian uh, ministry. She is attending on a National Merit Scholarship, the ASOTA Talent Scholarship, and the Sabbath Scholarship. She will graduate from Providence Christian School on May 23rd, 2024. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your graduates of 2024. appreciate it. <laughs> now a brief charge for our seniors. If you've got your Bible, you can turn to Psalms 119, verse 105. In that scripture says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. Well, if you open up God's word and you look at it, light is associated with the goodness of God. As a matter of fact, in the word, Jesus says that I am the light. And here he says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Seniors, you're going to be transversing some difficult ground in the upcoming years. You've always been in the household of your mom and your dad. They've been able to help you make certain decisions. But there's going to be times in your life in these next few years where you're going to have to make a decision that they may not be right there in that moment to help you make. Let God's word guide you and be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Also, let him be the light that is inside of you. Let him shine bright for those around you. He also tells us in his word that you should be the salt and the light of the world. So as you enter your college campuses and you're making your way about, make sure that those that see you see Jesus living inside you. I'm going to ask Brother Jeff if he'll come and pray over our seniors. Let me pray for our seniors. Y'all join with me. Our Father, we're so grateful today to see the accomp accomplishments of these two fine young people. And Father, we know that this is not the end of anything. It's just, they're just getting started, Lord. And Father, I pray that as they leave in the coming months uh, to go off to school, uh, Father, we pray that 
all the things that are necessary in their preparation of getting ready and dorm rooms and classes and all that transpires. We just pray, God, that you'll work in each of these uh, situations. And uh, Father, may you be glorified in it. Uh, Father, we're excited to, to know the kind of quality young people they are, uh, that they truly are going to make a difference. And Father, I pray uh, that they'll always be missionary-minded as they go, uh, that they're uh, a representative, that they are uh, taking Jesus with them and everywhere they go and everything that they do. And I pray that the way that they uh, live their life at school, uh, whether it be singing or whether it be uh, playing on the ball field or whatever it may entail, Lord, that people are going to be able to see Jesus in them. So, Father, we thank you for the homes that they represent and all the time and investment that they have made in the lives of these two young people. And, uh, Father, we again just want to thank you for all that you've done, the way that you've used them in our lives, the opportunity that we have had to watch them to grow and mature. And, uh, but, Father, we ask your blessings upon them. And we, we celebrate with them today the accomplishment of graduating from high school. And uh, we look forward to the days ahead and what you're going to do in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we have a special song today. We know that any time that we praise in here, we're singing to an audience of one. But I just pray that you guys receive this blessing today.
upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 Thank you, and, and uh, graduates, we're praying for you, and I tell you what, uh, while you're standing, just greet those around you this morning.
All right, this is our offertory song. Let's sing it together. The splendor of the king and clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great! How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. You're the name, here we go, you're the name above all names, you are worthy. sing how great is our God. You're the name, everyone. Uh, you're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. How great God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Sing that chorus one more time. How great is our God, sing with me how great is our God. See how great, how great is our God. Let us pray. Lord, how great you are, Lord. Lord, and we owe you much, much worship, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for these uh for these blessings of our children graduating, Lord God, and Lord, I just pray for the uh, for their futures. They may stick close to you, Lord, follow your will for their life. Lord, uh, I, I pray for this congregation, Lord. I pray that uh, that Jeff delivers the message and o hearts are open, Lord, and receptive. And Lord, I just uh, ask uh, you to bless those gifts and the gi uh, tithes as they collect these, Lord, to your kingdom purpose. In your holy name, amen. Afflictions eclipsed by glory, and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us so! Oh, how he loves us! How he loves us!
and we are his portion, and he is our prize. Drawn from redemption by the grace in his eyes, and if grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. When heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss, and my heart turns violently inside of my chest, I don't have the time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way It's a great day to be here this morning. Let me chew this thing up. I'm sorry. I was thinking, I was down here with the graduates here this morning, and, and um, I've been here long enough now that I can look back and really see how much they've grown. When I first came as pastor, I was taller than Hayes. <laughs> I don't know what y'all fed him. Uh, there's there's something in the water here because uh, uh, John Parker I, I used to be taller than John Parker. Why, just remember I was wider too. But um, it is it's exciting to see him grow up, and I remember um, seeing him involved in so many things around and 
and with Sarah, uh, you'd always find her running around uh, Operation Christmas Child and Vacation Bible School or whatever. And uh, some of y'all may not have known this, but uh, Sarah actually learned to drive up here in the parking lot. Uh, Y'all may not know that, but uh, that's all I'm going to say, Sarah. (laughs) But it's a great, great day to be here today. Uh, Wouldn't y'all agree with me that if if you reached the age of 90 years old, that uh, you ought to have happy birthday sung to you? Um, Well, we're going to sing. Buddy, help remind me. We're going to sing. Margaret, where is she? I know there she is. Uh, is it yesterday or today? Yesterday, yesterday uh, Margaret Goosby, she, she turned 90 years old. Now, some of y'all will say, well, she don't look. <laughs> some of y'all say, well, she don't look over 29. And uh, that's, that's true. But uh, we do wish you a happy birthday. And we're going to sing to you, uh, whether that's good or bad. But we're, we're going to sing to you before we get out of here today. But uh, take your Bibles today and turn with me over to John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verse 15 through 21. John chapter 6, verse 15 through 21. And if you have found that portion of Scripture and you're able to be able to stand, would you do so in honor and in reverence to reading God's Word John chapter 6, beginning with verse 15. Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself. Now when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was, also, uh, it was already dark, and Jesus had not come to them. Then the sea arose and became a a great wind was blowing. And so when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near uh, near the boat. And they were afraid. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they willingly received him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. Let's pray together. Our Father, we're honored to be in your presence. Your word is a reminder to us that when two or three are gathered in your name, that there you will be also. And I pray this morning that we would sense your presence. And I pray that everything that's in our mind and everything in our hearts be to you. That we're listening. That we're longing for you. And I pray, Lord, that at this time of the service, when we turn our attention to your word, Father, we believe your word to be true. It's trustworthy. It always has been, and it always will be. And I pray that as we look at this portion of Scripture, Father, I pray that we'll look beyond just the good story of it. But help us to see how it applies in our lives. How do we prepare for when storms or on the horizon, or when we're right in the middle of them, or as they're departing. We need you every moment of every day. And I pray that it will cause us to live a life of dependence upon you. And Father, I pray that you'd have your hand on my life today. I truly confess today that my words mean nothing and accomplish nothing. But Father, your word is is truth. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, it changes lives. And I pray today, God, that you will just 
speak through me. May the words that come from my lips have come from your heart. And may we not just be hearers of it. I pray that we'll leave here being doers of your word. And we pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. For our graduating seniors, um, this, I, I didn't necessarily intend it just for, for y'all today, but uh, it is something you need to be aware of. It's, it's not a matter of if storms are going to come. Uh, it's a matter of when, isn't it? Uh, some of y'all have been long, uh, uh, alive long enough to know that to be true. And uh, you will most likely face some along the way. Uh, but I hope that this will be encouragement to you this morning, and, and don't forget it. Uh, those of you uh, that have been here for some time, you know uh, what I'm about to preach is true because we, we're going to experience some, some hardships, some problems, some trials, some storms. They come in life. They come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, they don't always look the same. Uh, they don't always cause the same uh, things to happen in our lives, but they're real. Uh, storms are really real. And it could be that you came in this morning and uh, you're in the midst of a storm at this very moment. Uh, it may be a storm of some unexpected change. It may, might be a storm of some kind of tragedy that you're going through. And it may be a storm of, of failure. It may be a storm of fear. And you say, well, Brother Jeff, there's, there's no storm in my life today. It's all smooth sailing. I don't have any troubles in my life. Well, like I said, you may not be in a storm, but know this, that they come. And sometimes they come when we're least expecting them and probably when we're the least prepared for them sometimes. Well, in John chapter 6, we find the disciples, uh, they had some sweaty palms. Uh, they had some dry mouths. They, they had fear in their lives. And to get a, a clear picture of what happened that day, you need to take into account what Matthew and Mark had to say about this. So with that in mind, turn over to Mark chapter 6, verse 45 through 46. Now, as we learn how to make it through the storm, uh, the first thing that you've got to do is that through the storm, you, you've got to learn something about it and how to deal with it. Now, the first thing that I want to bring to your attention this morning is kind of unusual. Uh, you come to a place where Jesus knows that the, the time is coming where they want to snatch him up and they want to make him the physical king. So the Bible tells us here that he departed from them. Now, don't take that to read that when issues come and problems come that he departs. Listen, it's exactly the opposite. And we're going to get to that in just a few moments. But they had, uh, they were thinking about this, but Mark tells us that in his account that Jesus had departed. Now, let me show you something real quickly about his departure. If you look at Mark chapter 6, verse 45, now don't think that Jesus didn't know what was going on. He fully knew what was going on. There's never been a time when Jesus didn't know what was going on. He knew what was coming. He knew what was going to happen. Now understand this. Jesus sent his disciples into that storm. You say, well, if Jesus really loved them, he would have never sent them into the storm. Well, then you don't know Jesus very well. Folks, it was because Jesus loved them that he sent them into the storm. You see, storms don't have to be your enemy the storms very well could be your friend. Now let me ask you something. 
When do you grow the most spiritually in your life? When does your faith deepen the most? When does your trust in God grow the most? It's not when you're on the mountaintop. It's not when everything is going lovely and wonderful all the time. It's when you're in the storms. It's when you're in the valleys. It's when things are not going the way that you hoped that they would go. Mark Twain once said this. I, I like reading things that Mark Twain had to say because uh, he had a way of putting something in a way that was humorous but so true. He said this. He said, uh, a man carries a cat by the tail, learns something he can learn no other way. Isn't that true? I was visiting recently with a man who had been visiting our church here, and, and uh, he was going through a storm. He said, Pastor, he said, I have loved the Lord all of my life. But these past couple of years, I've spent more time in prayer than perhaps all my life combined. You see, it's the storms that God allows into our lives. He allows them in to grow us. It's the storms that he allows in our lives to ground us. It's the storms that stretch and strengthen us. It's the storms that drives those deep roots of faith down in our lives. So why did Jesus go up on the mountain? Now we're told for a couple of reasons. First of all, Jesus knew that the timing wasn't right. John chapter 6 verse 15, it reveals to us that they had a bad case of king fever. Now, in fact, Jesus was king, he is king, and he will always be king. He didn't become king just because of a demo uh, democratic process. He became king by the very will of God. You didn't vote him in. And listen, you can't vote him out. He is the king of kings, and he is the Lord of lords. Now, rem remember, Jesus had just fed the crowd that we looked at last Sunday from five barley loaves and the two sardines, if you will, that the boy had. They had witnessed the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, which we know was more than 5,000 because that was just the number of men. There was a great excitement in the air. But Jesus, because he knows all things, even beforehand, Jesus knew that it wasn't the right time. So he departed to the mountain. Now, the next thing that we see is this. He went there to engage in prayer. Now, in Mark chapter 6, verse 46, it tells us that Jesus got alone to pray. Now, let me ask you a question. If Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, knew that it was important to get alone in prayer, doesn't that tell us something about our prayer life? If it's something that Jesus needed to do, don't we need to get away sometimes and, and just get alone in prayer? The secret to prayer is prayer in secret. The tragedy today is not unanswered prayer. The problem is unoffered prayer. That's the problem. When was the last time that you really prayed? That you got alone with God and you opened up your heart and your life to him and, and you just prayed deeply to him? 
Might have been this morning. Might have been yesterday. Might have been last week. It could be for some of us it's been quite some time. You see, prayer was something that was a priority to Jesus. And folks, if it was a priority to Jesus, prayer should be a priority for us. But there's something else that I want you to see this morning, and I want you to see the dilemma of the saints that was happening here. Now, this small band of believers, they really had a, a threefold dilemma. To begin with, there was the distance that they were from the shore. Now, in Matthew chapter 14, verse 24, it tells us that they were in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. They were too far out to turn back, and they were too tired to keep on rowing. But not only were they in the middle of the sea, but the Bible tells us here they were in the middle of a storm. Maybe you find yourself in the middle of a storm today, and like the disciples, you came in here this morning and you sat down in the pew, and you physically, you're worn out. You've been rowing. You've been straining, doing all that you know to do, and it seems like the uh, storm is succeeding. Like the disciples, you're wondering how you're going to make it through the storm. But there's another dilemma, and that was the disturbance of the wind that was taking place. Mark says that the wind was against them. John tells us that a great wind was blowing. Now, that tells us that the waves were crashing against the boat, that their hair, if they had some, uh, some of them probably did and some of them didn't, but uh, their hair would have been flowing in the breeze and they were rowing and they were straining with all their might and as they rowed, they were getting nowhere. You ever been that, in that place in your life? You're straining and rowing in life, and it doesn't seem like you're getting anywhere. It seems like you're just standing still, and it appears as though the storm is going to be over you forever. But they rowed, and they were getting nowhere. They were full of fear. They must have been wondering how they, how they got into that mess. I can hear one of them saying, we're here because of Jesus. We're at the wrong place at the wrong time. But folks, that's not the truth. The truth is that they were at the right place at the right time. Maybe they realized in the fear of the moment that they were not there because they were out of the will of God, but, but they were there because they were in the will of God. Isn't that something about our nature sometimes? That we're, we're going through something difficult, something hard. A storm has come. And what's one of the first things that you and I think about? Why is God letting this happen to me? Matter of fact, we might go a little bit farther and say, where's God in all this? I could promise you, listen, there's not a storm that comes in your life that God won't use for his glory and for your benefit. He has a purpose for allowing storms to come in your life because he's molding and shaping you. He's, he's deepening your faith even when you don't know it. But it's our nature sometimes when these things come we're thinking, well, God must be mad at me about something. Uh, we think that God's getting back to us. Uh, he's getting, getting at us about it. And, and we, we think that somehow he's, he's left us alone in our, our storm, and, and we begin to feel hopeless, and we don't feel like that we're going to make it through that. See, Jesus sent them into the storm. Now, if that dilemma wasn't bad enough, now they must contend with the darkness, the darkness of the night. 
So not only are they out in the middle of this sea, the wind, the storm is blowing, but it's also in the dark. Now, I don't suspect that they were able to keep any lantern or anything lit in a, in a kind of storm like this. But you and I know that if, if we're out in a place where there's absolutely no light, sometimes you can't even see your hand in front of you. To be out in this ocean or this sea and the waves be crashing around you and the wind is blowing and uh, there may have been even lightning and and thunder, and all this is taking place, and they're fearful. They couldn't see their hand in front of their face. Matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 14, verse 25, tells us it was the fourth watch, which was about 3 to 5 a.m. Gets pretty dark about that time, doesn't it? They couldn't see their hand in front of their face. They couldn't see the shoreline. They didn't know which way was forward and which way was backward. It was pitch dark. And maybe this morning you might find yourself in the middle of the, the storm today. And you're weary like the disciples and you don't know which way to turn. And if you're one of his children, you can know that nothing gets to you. Nothing gets to you without first coming from him. Let that sink in. There's nothing that happens in our lives that God's not aware of. He knows. And he allows these things to come in our lives because they teach us something. He either causes it or he allows it. And through the storm, he's either perfecting or correcting. He's either perfecting us or he's correcting us. So how do we make it through the storm? I mean, when the winds are blowing and you don't know which way to turn, what are you supposed to do? Well, the third thing this morning is I want you to see the deliverance from the storm. Now, we don't think that their deliverance began on the sea because it really began on the shore. Think about this. Where was Jesus all this time? Where was he? He was on the shore. Jesus was praying for them. Now, was he praying that they survived the storm? He already knew that. He was praying that it would cause them to be more dependent on him. He was praying that they would see him for who he really is. He was on that mountain by himself, and what was he doing? Well, Mark chapter 6, verse 46 tells us that he was praying. Jesus was praying for them. Folks, don't we realize this morning that in the middle of the storm that Jesus is praying for us as well? Sometimes people will come to me and they'll ask me to put them on the prayer list and I'm always uh, open to that. I, I want to know what your prayer needs are. I want to be able to pray for you. But they asked me to put them on the prayer list, and I'm, and I'm happy to do that. But better than being on my prayer list is being on Jesus' prayer list. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, tells us that he ever lives to make intercession for us. Jesus is praying for you as you're, you're rowing in life. As you're straining in life, as you're struggling through the storm, you can count on it that Jesus is praying for you. Now, let, let me ask you something. Could they see Jesus 
on that mountain praying? Could those that were in that boat, the wind's blowing, that boat is like a cork in a, in a storm. It's just bobbing up and down, and the wind is blowing, and they can't see a thing. Could they know that Jesus was praying? They could hardly see what was happening in front of them. You see, they didn't, they couldn't see Jesus. But you see, it's not always that we can't see Jesus. The issue is he can see us. You may not can see him. He sees you and me. Jesus can see them. But folks, he sees us. He knows exactly where we are and what we're going through. Listen, he sees your struggles that you go through in life. He sees your sorrow. He sees your straining. And just as his prayers protected them, listen, he's praying for you as well. Okay, so what did his disciples do that got them through the storm? What was it that helped them to get through it? Well, let me briefly mention three things that they did because they're the same things that we need to do today in order to make it through the storm. Now, if you got your pen out, this is what you need to write down. The first thing that you and I need to do when we're going through the storm, the Bible says that they need to see Jesus. That they needed to know that Jesus was there. That he was aware. He was praying for them. So, for you and I, it's, it's seeing Jesus. Matthew chapter 14, verse 26, and also over in Mark chapter 6, verse 49, and in John 19 that we read together. When you find yourself in the eye of the storm, that's the time when you need to see Jesus. You say, well, Brother Jeff, is Jesus close enough to see my storm? Absolutely he is. I like what Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 says. It's the storms that, that drive you into the word of God. It's the storms that should remind you of his presence in your life. Now can you drown as long as your head is above the water? No. As long as your head's above the water, you can survive. It's when you go down there for an extended amount of time, that's where the problem is. Now, if Jesus is the head and all things are under his feet, you can know that the next time a storm blows your way, that listen, you can know that you're not going to drown. Look at this storm. What threatened to be over their head ended up actually being under their feet. And whatever seems to be over your head today, you can know that it's under his feet. So they, they saw Jesus, and it made all the difference. And then secondly, write this down. They heard Jesus. They heard it. Matthew chapter 14 verse 27 tells us that not only do we need to see Jesus, but we need to hear Jesus. Jesus is speaking to you. He's speaking to you even in the midst of the storm. He's speaking to you through the storm. And when you're going through them, listen, if, if you need to hear anybody, you need to hear Jesus. Jesus is speaking to you this morning through his word. Jesus may be speaking through a friend. He may be speaking through the circumstances. He may be speaking to you through the person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is speaking to you because he loves you. He knows what you're going through. Jesus is speaking to you through the Holy Spirit. 
question is, are we listening? Are we listening? He's saying to some people here this morning, he's saying that you need to be saved. There is no other way of salvation other than through him. He may be saying to some of us in here this morning, you have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart and life. But he's saying to some of us today, you need to be baptized. Others, he's talking about his call upon your life. And still others, he's talking to you about the storm, assuring you of his presence. It is either a, a correcting storm or it's a perfecting storm. That's why he allowed them in there. First they saw Jesus. Then they heard Jesus. Then they received Jesus. Now, real quickly, look at John chapter 6, verse 21. Then they willingly received him into the boat. And immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. <laughs> you may find yourself this morning in the middle of the storm feeling like the little boat in your life that's about to go under, but I've got some good news for you. When you see Jesus, and when you hear Jesus, and you receive Jesus into the boat of your life, listen, you can know that you are not going down. For what seems to be over your head, you need to remember, is always under Jesus' feet. So whatever storm is in your life, you need to remember that Jesus is greater and more powerful and more knowledgeable than any storm that may come into our lives. So do you understand this morning that he allows those storms to correct you? We're not always heading in the right direction, are we? Sometimes we get off on the, going the wrong way, going the wrong direction, maybe doing the wrong things. Listen, if he loves us, he's going to correct us. Y'all remember when you were children and uh, you were about to get a spanking or a whipping? And, and you remember your parents said something that you didn't, understand didn't make any sense to you at that time and they made that statement well, it's going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you and and you didn't get it but when you've become adults and you have children and you have to discipline your children for the first time you don't do it for the enjoyment of it you do it because you want to correct the direction that they're going in listen God will allow storms in your life to cause a course direction. If you're heading the wrong way, he'll send a storm in there to turn your boat around, I can promise you. But also, he's perfecting. He's perfecting. He's deepening your faith. He's deepening your dependence upon him. We need to be dependent upon him in everything in life. So when you're going through the storm, you can trust him. He's, he's going to reveal himself to you in ways that you will never see. Just like you hanging on to the tail of a cat. You're going to learn something you wouldn't learn any other way. Sometimes it's when you're going through that storm, that problem, that issue in your life, that you learn something about God. You learn something about your own faith that you may have never seen and known had you not gone through it. But some of you may be in the storm at this very moment. You're either heading for one, in one, or heading out of one. Either, either of those. So where are you this morning? Where are you this morning? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me just a moment?
I promise you, I don't have your phone tapped. And I don't have video cameras pointed at your house or in your car. I don't have GPS to know where you are and where you've been. Listen, I don't need to know. Matter of fact, I'm not sure I want to know. Listen, he does. He knows exactly where we are. He knows exactly the spiritual condition that we're in this morning. It very well could be somebody in here needs to be saved today. You're going under. If you don't have Jesus, you're you're going under. You're going to drown in your sin. But Jesus is the life preserver. And he's available. But you've got to receive him into the boat of your life. And it could be that some of us as believers this morning, we're in the storm and it doesn't make any sense and we're wondering where in the world God is. He's right there with you. He's right there with you. Whether that storm is one that you had no control over or whether it's one that you created yourself, he's going to be right there with you. He wants to use what you're going through to get you to where he wants you to be. It could be that we find ourselves this morning that we're not heading in the direction that he wants us to go. Listen, there needs to be a course correction today. Some of us as believers need to recommit ourselves. You say, preacher, you say that every Sunday. Yes, I do, because I think it's important. That's part of the invitation. It's for us as believers to turn our lives around and get right with him. And we have an invitation Sunday after Sunday, but so few believers ever come forward to recommit themselves. It's as if we can sit in the pew and we can pretend like everything's okay and nobody else knows what's going on in our lives. But listen, God does. He knows. If you don't make the course correction, he will. It could be that maybe God's dealing with you about something else. Maybe maybe you're not a member here, and, and maybe God's leading you to be a part of this church. We'd love to have you. If this is where he leads you. And it could be that some of you are here today, and you've been saved you've been born again but you've never been baptized that's the next step in obedience or maybe you just want to come and kneel and pray down front just turn that storm just lay it here at Jesus feet in just a moment I'm going to pray and then brother buddy's going to come and extend a, an invitation through the singing of the hymn of course and it's during that time that we're singing that I want you to be open to what the Lord's leading you to do. You need to see him. You need to hear him. And you need to receive him. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. And for the life lessons that we see. And how they teach us about our sinful nature and how they teach us about how much we need you in our lives. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit would touch hearts. I pray the Holy Spirit would tear down walls that we have built. I pray that He will pry our hands loose of the pew or whatever else we're hanging on to today. Lord, would you do something great and mighty and powerful and change us today so that we will never, ever, ever be the same. We ask and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Buddy's going to come lead us. Let's stand together as we're as we sing together and if the Lord is
spoken to your heart today and there's a decision that needs to be made. I'm going to be down front. Brother Donnie will be here. Brother Bob will be here. We want to help you. We want to pray for you. We want to assist you in whatever way. Let's sing together. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to Thank you so much uh, for being here today. And before we leave, uh, I think we've got some singing we need to do. So, Miss Margaret, uh, we sing to anybody and everybody that reaches at least 90. So, uh, we rejoice. And uh, glad to see you back. Um, she, uh, she tried to crack our pavement out there uh, two weeks ago, but we're glad you're better. And, uh, did you? <laughs> It appeared like you did, so, uh, but we're glad that you're here. And we want to sing happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Uh, just... So, you know, we're not finished with our graduate celebration yet. You say, well, why are we standing? Well, because we, we're fixing to dismiss, but we're going to go eat. And uh, just like the loaves and the fishes last week, there'll be plenty of food. Uh, we're having a meal in honor of our graduates today, and you're welcome to stay with us and enjoy that. Um, you know, when I was growing up, if I went home to visit my grandmother and my two great aunts, uh, if I didn't eat a meal with them, they didn't feel like I visited with them. Uh, visiting with them and staying with them today is important, so I, I hope that you'll do that. I don't want to guilt you, but uh, uh, they would greatly appreciate that. Well, thank you for being here today, and uh, we're going to dismiss, and uh, uh, Brother David is going to come and, and uh, close us out with prayer, but thank you for being here. Find those that are visiting with us, uh, our honored guests, and uh, make sure that they know that they are welcome here. Lord, uh, we thank you for the message that we've heard here today, Lord, and Lord, we uh, I thank you for uh, the lives that are impacted with that. Lord, I thank you for uh, the celebration we're about to partake in, Lord God, as we celebrate these kids uh, graduating school, Lord God, and for the things that will be doing in their future, Lord. Lord, uh, we just thank you for this fellowship that we're going to enjoy, Lord Jesus, and Lord, I just uh, thank you, praise you, and honor you for all this. Amen.